Hello. Hello. Testing. Hi, Tony. 8 a.m. in Wisconsin. Oh, are you having winter? I was about to say winter feelings. <laughs> um, winter symptoms. <laughs> That's what it is. Winter is a sim. It's a symptom. <laughs> All right, one second. I'm just gonna tweet this. Okay, that's done. And I'll close that. I have way too many things open on my computer. Hi guys. Hi Sacred Heart. Hi Tony. Let me turn this light on. Ooh. Having kind of a cool sunset. There was an amazing sunrise this morning again. We've been having some incredible sunrises. Hi Holly. How's the music to voice ratio? Okay, cool. I think we're ready. Except wait, no, I'm gonna move chat to the other side. Cause my, my camera blocks it sometimes. Okay, now we're ready. <laughs> oh my goodness, Sacred Heart, that sounds amazing. I'll show you really quick the sunrise we had. I'm gonna include a little mini clip of it in my next YouTube video, but... Um, this was two days ago or three days ago? I can't remember. It was very recent. I didn't take a video of today's sunrise because I was actually driving during the sunrise, but it was, it was glorious. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Um, oh, let me open my bot really quick. Just in case. It's not nighty bot. It's night bot. So today I decided it's the beginning of a new era <laughs> and by that I mean I am going to set up my palette differently for the first time in who knows how long. Hi Bob, Merry Christmas, yes, Happy Holidays, Happy Yuletide, whatever you celebrate out there. I hope it's going wonderfully. Um, so this is my watercolor palette, or at least that's what I've been using it for for the last few years. It is henceforth going to be my gouache palette <laughs> because I am so sick of opening it and gooey watercolor is running everywhere. It just drives me crazy. And the reason that happens is because I was actually using it as a hybrid watercolor gouache palette. So I would put my gouache here and then I would close it like this, therefore the watercolor was upside down. Because the gouache was wet, I didn't want the gouache to be upside down. So when I did that, occasionally the moisture from the gouache would like release and, and make my watercolors activate. And then the watercolors would drip down and just like there would be watercolor goo everywhere. So from now on, I am going to be putting the gouache in the wells. Which means, well actually I don't need to do that. I can also just set this like here if I want to. Um, and then I'm going to be just using this lower area for my mixing tray. So hopefully that will mean 
Um, I can always take this out and then put my gouache there and then close it like that and nothing is going to drip anywhere. At least that's the thought process. <laughs> Hi Slave of Hell! Hi Koparka! So yeah, we're going to try it out today, see how it goes. Because I realize also when I go to Jamaica I'm going to bring my small travel kit for watercolor so I don't need all my watercolors in this palette. So this will be perfect for gouache if I just like dedicate it for gouache. Um, for my studio sessions that are a little bit longer I'm going to be using the sponge like I usually do. I'll just set it here. Uh, actually I can just do this maybe. I don't know, I'll just do that. And then when I'm out plein air painting, I'll just squeeze the tubes of, I'll squeeze the gouache into the wells um, because those are much quicker sessions and I don't have to worry about it drying out over like a period of three hours. Uh, but ha because I'm in the studio, because we're sitting here streaming, it's going to be a while. I don't want my paint to just dry out right away. So that's why I'm using this wet sponge combination still, even though I'm using this new palette setup. My, what am I going to use as my studio watercolor palette? Um, actually, Woosie, I've been... T I have another big plastic tray thing that is from another closable palette. And for the last, like, four paintings that I've done, I've squeezed out fresh, gua uh, fresh watercolor and I've painted directly from this open trace kind of thing. Um, which means, like, I'm blending my colors a little bit more. Like, I don't know, I'm kind of... I guess I'm changing the way I use watercolors not on purpose it just started happening and partially it's because I've been doing bigger watercolor commissions and it means I need like a bigger bigger piles of paint and I need big areas to mix and get my get like the brush full of water and watercolor so the bigger trays are awesome for that and then um, they're super easy to clean you know once I'm done I can just go put them under the sink so yeah, it's a little bit different, but I've, I've realized like my gouache style, I like to be a little more compact. And then now lately with my watercolor style of painting, I'm like, I have stuff everywhere. I have like trays everywhere and I have big piles of paint and big um, washes, pre-mixed washes and stuff. So yeah. All right. So I'm going to use the rest of this gouache because it's wet still. Um, but I'm gonna add a couple more colors because today we're doing snowy landscapes. In my last YouTube video, I talked about how I've been really into summer scenes because I'm tricking, trying to trick myself <laughs> into thinking it's summer and to not be so gross and cold out. Excuse me. Um, but I also love painting snow. And the other day when it finally snowed for the first time, I was like, holy crap, that's so beautiful. I want to paint that. And I was like, wow, it's been a while since I've done uh, done snowy landscapes, snowscapes. So let's just go for it. Could I, could we see your travel watercolor palette? Um, yeah, except don't judge me. <laughs> Okay, don't judge. <laughs> it's it's a mess. Um, I really never clean it between uses, uh, and it's actually been a couple months since I've used this one. But when I'm doing plein air painting with watercolor, I only use a very limited palette, and this is my favorite. If I'm only going to bring a few colors, these colors are amazing for landscapes because um, there are some vibrant tones, but they're pretty earthy and they mix so wonderfully. Like, oh, I just love these colors together. So it's indigo, cobalt blue, helio turquoise, which that's the one I sometimes change out for a different blue. Um, like sometimes I'll do cobalt or something else. Or, um, teal or a turquoise kind of thing. Oh, well, and then I do uh, pearling green, green gold, chromium oxide green, one brilliant dark, 
uh, or June Brilliant Dark. <laughs> Didn't you guys say I was saying it wrong? Quinacridone Burnt Orange, Potter's Pink, Pyrrolene Violet, and Neutral Tint. Green Gold or Azo Green, change your your watercolor game. <gasps> Isn't it amazing? I love that color so much. Which which version do you use? Um, do you use the Gram M Gram one? I have the Daniel Smith, and it's very, very, very active in the water. Like, it spreads like crazy. Do you have double-digit temperatures in Berlin? Winter's over. <gasps> what? Also, hi, Corvillas. Hi, Dove Liz. Hey, Evangeline. You spelled it wrong. Oh, no, that's an old palette, so you've <laughs> I've been spelling it wrong for years and it just it is what it is okay so let me figure out what's going on um, if you didn't see my YouTube video this morning I posted it like at 8 a.m. or something this is what I did in those video in that video I did these little mini tropical scenes um, Yeah, that'll, I'll put that there. Mm, or maybe. M. Graham and Renaissance. Oh, Renaissance. That's how you say it, right? Will this fit here? I'm like, have a lack of space. Hopefully that won't, um, thanks stuff. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, I've actually, so that color palette I showed you earlier, that's what I used for all of these earlier paintings. So I'll give you a quick glimpse at this, what you can achieve with this color palette. So that's the travel palette. Those gouache, ignore that. early years. <laughs> it's a pretty wide variety of colors. So that one I added ink from my brush pen. So it, there's like really dark darks on that one. So yeah, then we get into the gouache. Sunset on the right is insane. Kira! Um, okay, just gonna make sure I cut, caught up. So, 21 pages left, guys. It's gonna happen. Gonna make it. And as I said, today we're doing snowscapes, which I love. My last gouache sketchbook had a lot of snowscapes in it, which reminds me I was doing it last winter. <laughs> I feel like the goal of completing two of these sketchbooks in a year is a really good goal. Cause having the pressure of like oh I gotta finish it makes me do more studies more often which is so good for me but if I just have a sketchbook lying around and I don't have any like real time goals for it that thing can last years <laughs> and with the amount that I've been painting lately in order to fill this sketchbook it's been um 
the cool thing is that it's been really helping me with my digital painting because I've been like working on lots of illustrations lately and mixing with gouache especially uh, really forces me to look at color differently and I learn a lot which translates to other mediums and especially digital. bright enough so how are you guys how was your week has it been a crazy week as you prepare for the holidays or are you guys pretty chill mine is both some days have been kind of chill and then other days have been insane <laughs> or it's been like a half and half kind of thing I, like this week is seriously a blur. I don't even, I, I could look back at my calendar to figure out what happened, but it, it's all just a blur together. Uh, fat, uh, fat lot of nothing in your days off this week. Oh, you had days off? Mm. All right, so. Let's start with hmm, shadowy snowscape. Please end me now. Oh, Kira, are you okay? Pokemon and read a book. Nice. What did you read? Clean and sleep. Yeah. On the couch or in bed. Good. I feel like you need it. wanted to make sure I put the reference folder up on my monitor. True crime book. So interesting. I I know that crime and uh, th uh, thriller or like, what are they called? Mystery and detective kind of books are super, super popular. And there's a huge section of them at the bookstore and I've just never really been into them. I get too impatient and annoyed and I automatically read the end of the book. Like I'll be one chapter in and I'm like, screw this. And I find out the ending. Although I do that with most books anyway. I'm, I know it's horrible. <laughs> uh but it's just what I've always done. <laughs> I even did it with like Harry Potter and all of the, the fantasy books that I still love and that I read once in a while. It's like, I just couldn't bear not knowing if everyone was gonna be okay. <laughs> it's like torturing me as I was reading it. In the, and it's like so awful because as I'm doing it, I'm like, haha, nobody can stop me. I'm cheating and I'm going to the end of the book. I feel like such a badass. <laughs> Said no badass ever. <laughs> Family gathering this Saturday. The nail biting feeling is the best. Well, luckily when I did, like for Harry Harry Potter, for instance, when I read the end of it, it didn't really reveal a 
a lot. I mean, it revealed some stuff about certain characters, but throughout the book, there are lots of other things that happen to lots of other characters. So I was on, I had a lot of cliffhangers during the book still, but yeah, I was, I couldn't handle it. <laughs> and I've done it with so many books. Wait, what? Oh, did we just get a new Patreon? Or is that message old? My phone sometimes sends me old messages. No, I'm speechless corvulus. <laughs> <laughs> what? Or, uh, you're not gonna ever look at me the same, are you? <laughs> you're like, she's one of them. than before. <laughs> I mean, the books still get to me and I still have an emotional reaction and I'll cry my eyes out either way, but at least I don't feel like there's like this horrible sense of dread unless I find out what's happening. And <laughs> just the camera. Oh. I, I just can't handle it. I'm too weak. Speaking of Patreon, you guys, this January is my five year Patreon anniversary. So I asked my Discord Patreon chat what we should do and Woosie gave me a bunch of really good ideas. So maybe doing like a celebration stream on Twitch where I can give like my patrons a little badge in chat so they kind of stand out. And then like if we, I could make a special sticker that like live in chat so people can give me feedback and stuff and if we hit a certain like donation goal or something I can send it to everyone to all my patrons regardless of whether they have the physical rewards or not which I thought was kind of a cool idea because it would be like the generosity of a few would benefit the the greater community but I don't know, we'll, we'll keep thinking of ideas and see what we can do. Oh, and also because I did these, I was doing these on Monday, these are gonna be the Patreon postcards this month. So check it out guys. Uh, I don't know which one was the first one I did. So this was my test. I did the, this is acrylic. This is gouache and this, these two, the white and the gold are acrylic inks. Um, and I was like, okay, this is great, but I don't want to worry about the cards getting wet. So like I decided to go to all acrylic and all acrylic inks. So then I started playing around more and I found this tube of turquoise acrylic, but I did not realize that it was also metallic. So now <laughs> the whole card is kind of shiny. Which in a way I think works really well, especially because it's a moon scene and it feels like it all has that sense of moonlight. So these are going to be sent out hopefully next week. I still have to make the stickers this month, but I really, really like how graphic they are. And some of them have like little splashes, but they're all a little bit different and uh, they're so much better in person like you guys are seeing them on a pixelated screen <laughs> But I'm really excited to send these ones out and they definitely feel very like wintry and also have that it, They kind of make me feel like they give me this New Year's vibe like celebration vibe. I think because of the sparkle Hey Steven 
Anyways, I couldn't, I had to show you guys because I'm really excited about them. <laughs> Uh, also, just FYI, today's stream is probably going to be two to three hours long um, because I still have to do a bunch of stuff that's due tomorrow and I'm not freaking out about it, but I'm kind of freaking out about it. Um, but I just need to get a bunch of stuff done before the holiday weekend and then especially before Monday's long stream because Monday's my six hour stream on, on Twitch. And then I'll be gone for a couple days because we're visiting Wolfie's family. Uh, and then I'll be back for a normal stream next Friday. At least I should be. Wait, what's next week? When is the 30th? Or the 31st? Or when's, when is, oh, it's, oh, okay. So the first is a Wednesday. So that is kind of nice because it doesn't, it means that my streams don't really interfere with it. Oh wait, no, I need to do the lighter color first. The sense of dread makes you read faster. <laughs> uh. tidy up your office it's a disgrace oh man our living room is like that right now because uh i was moving a bunch of stuff around and like kind of packing a few boxes and i was trying to make space for a tree because i thought we were gonna get a tree when we ended up i ended up not getting a regular christmas tree i got a little windowsill christmas tree that can be planted after the holiday which i i definitely prefer um so, I yeah, I made a mess in the living room for no reason, <laughs> but I love my little tree, and Vader loves it too. Except he can't—he's kind of mad because he can't really reach it. At first, it was right next to his cat tree, and he could climb right up and like start clawing it and sniffing it and stuff. But um, I was like, uh oh. So I moved his cat tree. It's like three feet to the left of the windowsill, so he keeps like sitting on the edge of his cat tree and like reaching a paw to like see if he can get over on the windowsill. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and everything is gonna be on the floor because like he'll probably jump up there. And I'm half wondering if I should just um, move the tree during the night time. <laughs> I don't know. Or maybe put it in here because I always close my office door at night. What is tickling me? There's like a rogue hair that's tickling me. <laughs> it drives me crazy. Do you guys ever have that when you have glasses and like something gets stuck on the glass, your, like a piece of hair will get stuck on your glasses and stab you in the eye and you can brush it away a million times and it's always gonna be there. Renee knows what I'm talking about. Your contacts? Ooh. Someday. Like, I always wanted to get contacts, and I keep thinking, like, someday I'll get contacts, and life will be so much easier. But then I hear horror stories about contacts, and I'm like, oh. 
Maybe not. I feel like they have a lot of benefits, but they can also be a pain in the butt. Although I will say, when I started wearing glasses, it helped me become much more responsible for things. Like before I had glasses, I used to lose everything. Like I just, it was awful. I, I would lose everything all the time. And with glasses, I had to like be very, very sure where they were at all times. And I couldn't like misplace them. Um, But yeah. It's random benefit, I guess. Me too, Corvulus. That's the one thing I hate about glasses. No, I hate a lot of things, but my glasses are always dirty and Wolfie makes fun of me. And I'm just like, I don't know why. It just, it is, it is. That's the way it is. They exist in an eternal state of dirty. There's always like smudges on them or just like dust and just like, ah, everywhere. And I clean them constantly. Like, how does this happen? Really helps you not lose things but if I lost my glasses then I wouldn't be able to see I wouldn't be able to find them I guess I would be screwed <laughs> nowadays it's disturbing how bad my eyesight is like it went downhill really fast which my doctor warned me about they're like once you start wearing glasses you kind of like stop forcing your eyes to do some of the work and your prescription will exponentially or, or like forever degrade but you'll have less headaches and other things will be better too so like it's worth it Yeah, I've heard great things about the LASIK surgery, and I've also heard, well, like with anything, there's also, there's always going to be some not so great stories, right? <laughs> Yeah, Joe, I hate that. I hate it when I'm working. But I I just I just need them for for everything. Eyesight in general sucks. Like if I take them off right now, I can't read chat. And you're ch and you're only a little bit further than an arm's length away from me. If I squint, I can kind of make out some words still. So is anyone else painting or drawing with with me today or alongside me, I mean? I mean, it's not a paint along, but like, you know what I'm saying? Is anyone else arting right now? <sighs> oh God, Sacred Heart. I know that part really just, oof. I mean, I'm hoping you're not awake when that's happening. That would be horrible. <laughs> 
<laughs> I could not handle that. <laughs> Tony, you are, you're making some molds. Ooh, cool. Practicing the art of laying comfortably in bed. Oh man. Well, I hope by now you're a pro. Stress ball so you don't blink. What? Oh god, no. No, no, no. <laughs> Definitely a big nope from me on that one. be a pro at it why not just takes practice hey sassy cat you're adding trying to work out a color scheme oh Renee I'm gonna have to look into those because you guys probably notice I'm always doing this like pushing my glasses up constantly Roll saw patterns. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think my my eyesight is bad enough to warrant doing the LASIK. I mean, I'm sure they would do it because they want you to pay them to do it, <laughs> but I don't know. It just seems like a lot for. And I'm, and I'm not as bad as some people. Arting. Oh, I was like adding. What do you mean? <laughs> you should get new glasses. My neighbor works at a eye doctor, an opt optician. What is it called again? Oh my god, why can't I remember the word? It hasn't been that long since I've been there. Optician, right? <laughs> um, and she was like, oh yeah, try I'll see if we can get you in before the holiday. And then we both completely forgot about it. Ophthalmologist. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Optometry. What'd you say about my mama? funny without bug buggy glasses. <laughs> Yeah, that's one thing that's kind of crazy when you do get glasses and you finally get used to them. At first it's weird. You're like, ah, oh, I look so strange with glasses. And then you go a year or two and everyone knows you with glasses and you know yourself with glasses. And it's when you take them off, you're like, oh, it's you. <laughs>
So have you, those of you who are over on Twitch as well, have you tried out the new emotes in chats? Have you tried out my new emotes in chats? I almost didn't say anything in Discord about it. I was like, it'd be really funny if I just redid them and then uploaded them and people just randomly figured it out on their own. Zoom in more on the painting. Oh, sure. Sorry about that. Yeah, you guys, of course, let me know if you ever want to zoom in or out. A vision impairment. Yeah, I guess also if you're watching on mobile, it's much harder to see if it's further away, huh? Trying to play with color temperature in this one. Joe, I am using uh, a mixture of Windsor Newton and Holbein. These are the two brands I mainly use. kind of hazy snowy glow was present right at the beginning uh, of your painting and just continues. Oh yeah, I know. I, something I love about watching people paint is seeing how it develops. When I watch a video like on YouTube, so pre-recorded video, I like to watch the full thing from start to finish and then I like to go back and kind of skip the video and like see it done in chunks because it gives you like a broader understanding of what they did. Sometimes when you're watching in real time, if it takes them a while, you kind of forget the different steps they went through. Um, but yeah, it's always really fascinating to see, to see how it develops over time. Um, but these are just supposed to, these are meant to be sketches. So I'm not, I'm trying not to well too long on each one um i want to like get in learn something and get out you know what i mean <laughs> uh, i can't get hold line there but windsor and then talons are standard and quite cheap yeah that's why i like the windsor newman because you get a lot for your money um and i know there's tons of other brands that i still haven't tried out there but but i'm very very happy with with them. And so actually most of my Holbein tubes I've had for two or three years and I've just like, I, it's not like I purposefully use them sparingly, but I think my style of painting lends itself to be, or it's a little more like watercolor and then I'll use opaque paint during the session, but it's not like some painters who do like really really thick from the start so it means that my tubes last ages uh which is which of course i like um because it whole line is expensive it's it's one of those that yeah i just i appreciate the quality a lot but i'm glad that it lasts me a while. Um, something like 150 euro per tube. Oh, that's so cheap. Oh my God. I think it's more expensive here.
You order yours at Jackson's. Do they have good deals on it too? Um, I should check out if they ever have sales. Ooh, actually, I wonder if there's a way to sign up for alerts if they ever have like certain types of sales. Like, I just care about gouache. Can I find out when that goes on sale? Can we get a shot of your mixing palette when you get a chance? Absolutely. I'll zoom out again. Oh wait, I guess I can't. You get good deals. Dang, man, Joe, I should pay you to send me some. <laughs> it would be so much cheaper, I feel like. <laughs> um, do you want to see a duel for a second? Hi, Jared. How are you today? Yes, we're doing goosh. More goosh. So tidy really Renee <laughs> um, I do I, I cleaned out this palette earlier today and this is just my normal setup that I do this is a um, stay wet sponge so this is a damp sponge and then I put the acrylic palette paper on it and I get the acrylic palette paper wet let it sit for a minute and then I put the gouache on it and it keeps it keeps the gouache piles much more moist for way longer so you know sometimes your pile can dry within like a half an hour and that's really frustrating especially if you're doing like a three hour session so for plein air painting I don't mind I don't worry about doing all that because I work so fast I usually do like 10 minute sketches outside 10 minute paintings even 20 minutes is is fine but um but yeah it's just the palette is the palette paper has saved me a lot of paint i think <laughs> you're wearing your comfortable track pants right now so i'm doing very well how is everyone doing well today thanks yeah i got all my errands done by like 10 a.m which was amazing and i beat the insane holiday traffic um and then i worked out and then I got a bunch of work done and now we're streaming so it's been a productive day um you can use baking parchment it absorbs moisture better I don't want the only thing is I don't want my palette paper to absorb <laughs> the moisture or absorb the paint um, I want it to stay on top of it as much as possible so this acrylic palette paper works awesome for that how are you today oh yeah I was gonna text my dad um, oh no I already told him never mind I told him about the the package uh, you te you keep gouache wet by spraying water the only thing the problem with that is that by adding water you automatically reduce the opacity so if you want your gouache to be fresh and have the possibility of a hundred percent opacity you cannot use any water um, so I know I understand the value of spraying it because then at least it doesn't dry out completely but I always try to avoid that for as long as possible <laughs> all right moving on next one Do you find a difficulty in blending gouache? Yes. <laughs> I talked about that in my recent video that I posted about making a palette 
uh, or sorry, a mixing chart for gouache. I think that mixing gouache and blending gouache and getting and color matching gouache is the hardest out of all the painting mediums. Because I feel like it's the one that changes the most between being wet and dry. It like sometimes can drastic look pretty drastically different from being wet to dry. So again, the importance of having color swatches ready to go, that shows you what it's going to look like. Um, but once you kind of get used to those things, then uh, just actually blending and mixing can be so tricky because I feel like sometimes the second color that you add or like whatever the most the, the final color that you add to the mix becomes the dominant color. I've experienced that quite a few times and I just kind of chalked it up to being uh, me being unfamiliar with my colors, like not getting you haven't gotten used to them. Um, like some colors are just super powerful, but the more I use them, the more I find that like they're all really, really powerful. So the most, whatever the final color you're adding to the mix is, um, can easily become the dominant color if you aren't careful with how much you're adding. Uh, you have to kind of think about it like gouache is almost like pure pigment in liquid form. It's not diluted at all. It's like you're painting with liquid pastels basically. So each color, unless it's a pre-mixed color in a tube that like, you know, a gray or a light purple or something like that, like you're getting like pure color. It's so intense. So unless you're doing a really, really, really stylized look, you absolutely have to blend and mix the colors. You can't just use them straight out of the tube. Um, and yeah, they, they overlap differently than other paints I've discovered. Uh, they, they just, they just have a life of their own. <laughs> Um, you posted an adorable picture. Okay. <laughs> Elliptical trainer working out well then. Yes, it is actually. I'm loving it, Itchy. I, I love it. It's a little squeaky now, which I knew was going to happen eventually, but I don't care. I just put Netflix on and I turn up the volume and I just go and it's, it's so nice having that and not having to go out in the freezing cold because my lungs always hurt when I'm outside working out in the winter like just so unpleasant <laughs> slow drying acrylics never tried them have you guys tried those I think the what I the problem like I don't want to make it sound like I hate that about gouache I love that about gouache I love the that it almost feels like a, a water-based version of oil when you're mixing and blending it feels a lot like oil paint except it dries almost instantly which is super convenient um and and because the color intensity is so high i just that's just one thing you have to get used to and, and you do get used to it the more you do it so it's not like a bad thing it's just something you have to get used to color shift to add some surprises. Yeah, Azura, I I like that too. It um it it goes I think for my personal aesthetic, it works really well because I like having like two raw colors next to each other versus like making sure it's completely blended on the canvas. I like that almost impressionist look. So, for me it works like it makes me happy that I can get streaks and like it, you know, little surprises here and there. I mean, that's another reason I love oil too, but, but gouache is just so much more convenient in my opinion. Mm, music. What happened to the music? 
Yes, I am here. Allow me to introduce myself. Who knows what that okay. Detroit might represent next? He's a very clever arch criminal who must be put away. Another innocent. I've never tried this playlist before, so I'm hoping it's still okay for, for YouTube. <laughs> it's just chill hop, so I feel like most of those are okay. No, I haven't tried Casey and Kane. I've watched James Gurney use it and I've heard a lot about it, but I just haven't had a chance to. Um, one thing I really want to try is poster paint. I've seen a lot of videos about it. I've seen people using it on like Instagram and stuff. And um, like someday when I have a more permanent studio space and I have a little bit more room to spread out, I would love to have just like a wall of my poster paint colors. Um, Cause I feel like, well, they come in like big tubs usually and it might, it might be like a little bit, it might take some getting used to, like in terms of how, uh, like the whole process of using them, but, but yeah, anyway, it's, it's just one of those things I really want to, I want to get to eventually. I found a pretty nice looking set on, on Amazon for, I think a hundred and fifty, maybe it's between a hundred and two hundred for sure. So it's a lot. So it's not something I could just randomly try. And I think that is actually what some of the Ghibli artists used or, or still do. So I like to start off my scenes with a more diluted wash of my highlight color. So the nice thing about doing that is it kind of sets the tone of your highlights right off the bat. So you know what your brightest bright is straight, straight away and you can work down from there. Um, hey Alex, uh, Azir, I also have that mindset. I definitely go with the flow. <laughs> um, I think it's partially because I have developed this permanent state of like being a student in a way, like I, every single thing I create, I see as a learning opportunity, not necessarily a finished piece. So if it ends up being a finished piece that I love and I can frame it and maybe sell it, then awesome. But like from the moment I start painting it till the end, it's in a way, it's just me practicing. Um, how much time I put into it might vary. So like, obviously these ones are sketches. Um, this, this book is filled with anywhere from 15 minute paintings to, I think the longest recent one I've done was the forest one. That one was quite a, that was a while. That was a couple hours, I think. And that one, I think each of those were two to three hours, but, uh, it's, yeah, it's just, it just based, it's all based on how much time I want to put into it or maybe the goal of the piece the in sitting down and thinking okay this is what I'm gonna focus on this time a finished piece <laughs> yes <laughs> um, mission gold pure pigment set Ooh. Uh, Ghibli. Oh, I was like, chili. What? <laughs> Ghibli use a mix of tempera, gouache, and watercolors. Okay. I'm, I'm assuming it's pretty similar to poster paint though. It looks very similar and it has, I think poster paint in general is similar to gouache. I don't even know like the, the exact difference between all of them, but, um, I feel like the nice, it seems like you can get a lot for your money with poster paint. How do you frame gouache work for sale? 
Uh, usually I do something like... Um, okay, I have a random pile of stuff. So this is an agua, this is watercolor, but I have lots of these pre-cut windows, these mats, and I usually do that and then frame it behind glass and try to, if I'm selling it without a frame, I try to remind the, the buyer that they absolutely cannot get it wet and they have to like, well, immediate framing is advised because, you know, water will reactivate gouache. And then um, remind them that it's not good to keep paintings in direct sunlight, all the normal stuff. I mean, that goes for almost every medium, but watercolor and gouache especially, don't ever, don't ever hang it in direct sunlight. Okay. Excuse me. Let's do some grays. Sorry if my camera's bouncing. <laughs> it's one of the problems with having it, the overhead attachment thingy. Good morning. Elephant? Wait, what? Oh, elephant, yeah. <laughs> How do you glaze in gouache? You basically just, it's the same thing as watercolor. You have to use transparent layers. Just overlay transparent layers. Um, in a way, that's kind of what I'm doing right now because I'm using slightly watered down gouache as my second layer so you're getting a little bit of that warm peach color showing through the green but it's a lot harder with gouache because you can reactivate gouache so unless you're using like super super thin layers and I don't know like let it dry a lot between and <laughs> then maybe you can build up lots of glazing layers but I think there's a limit a much lower limit uh, Aruda Art. Amazing paintings with all the stuff we're speaking of. I think you'd love his work. Aruda. That sounds familiar. Um, are they you on YouTube or should I just like look on Instagram or something? Oh, also, I need some navy blue. So I can cool down that cobalt blue. Squash with something and glaze over it. Oh, yeah, I guess you could try that. I've never experimented with it, but if you're fixing it with something that's, you know, a little more permanent, then a 
in theory that should definitely work uh, but yeah I mean you can probably find videos of people doing that <laughs> he's on YouTube okay um, Oh, apparently Aruda is also a plant. So fine. searching. Oh, Iruda. Oh, okay. Iruda. What is it with you rock and rollers? You can perform for a thousand people and you can't be honest with is that one. Someone speaking? That was confusing. <laughs> um, is this the person you're talking about? Aruda. Like they do lots of figurative and character stuff. Is that the one? Oh, it's Totoro. Okay, make sure I check it out later. Oh, so does he do process videos um, explaining how they do their technique? I'm always interested in hearing how other people use gouache. The cool thing is it seems like gouache is getting more and more popular so I've seen like way more videos this year than I than I did before and I'm assuming it's just gonna keep growing. Not a fan of that list of that playlist. Everyone's mesmerized by gouache. <laughs> yeah, I I feel like that's. Uh, there's been a few artists who have emerged that seemingly exclusively use gouache, and so when you see the magical things that they can create, you're like, oh my god, I want to do that. How do I get that look? And then you find out it's gouache. And then you try it and then you jump out the window no <laughs> just kidding but it is one of the more frustrating mediums in my opinion well it can be one of the more frustrating mediums i've noticed <laughs> for some reason gouache just kind of clicked with me and i mean obviously i'm still learning a ton as i go but I don't know like it just it seemed to work really well with my with my workflow with my technique and I never really had the time that some artists go through of pure hatred for gouache <laughs> it's like I whenever I do the gouache paint alongs there's some people who are like I hate gouache so much this is horrible and I'm like oh no I'm sorry <laughs> forgive
Very easy to handle anywhere. Frustrated by it daily, but keep going. That's that's good. Just keep going. Tough lesson. Oh, they'll be very appreciative when you return, slave of hell. They'll be like, finally, help us, save us. large gouache art how was your experience so okay I've done most of the time I do smaller stuff like anywhere from this size to eight a six by eight um, occasionally I'll do a nine by twelve inch piece and it definitely takes a lot more patience because you're you have a bigger space to fill more details involved and um, I don't know, like depending on what style you're going for, for like more realistic versus more stylized, uh, it, it, it can, you can't get away with doing certain things. <laughs> so um, yeah, a lot of patience. And then also occasionally I do really big pieces. Like I recently just did a commission, an 18 by 24 inch map, and it was watercolor and gouache, and that took so much time, so much patience. But I feel like once I get through the first few layers, I love I love working bigger. Just takes a little while to like set it up. Water to thin it made it streaky, but using white made it so smooth. Yeah. Uh, gouache on canvas. I don't think I have. I don't think I've tried that. I just like, I actually prefer painting with gouache on a smoother surface. I don't think I would like it on a, on a textured canvas. Cause I mean, the closest I've come to is uh, cold press watercolor paper and I'm not a huge fan of using gouache on it unless it already has like a base coat of watercolor then it's a little better works better on absorbent paper hmm. can like look at old travel posters A lot of old travel posters definitely have that kind of um, flat color look, which now is much easier to do in digital. Itchy, are you texting me? <laughs> I need to warn you. What are you doing? Oh God. Should I not look? <laughs> what, what, what is it? I don't want to look yet until I'm until I know. To get some from time to time. Okay. Well, you can also expect to continue to receive Vader videos. Oh, I should send you the one I took today of him discovering the tree. What have you brought into my house, woman? What is this?
Hey, John. I know he, he, I sprayed the, he actually was like, eh, about the tree, but I put, um, this like shiny garland stuff around it to make it more festive. And he started eating that and I was like, oh no, no, you don't. Okay. So I sprayed that with like a mixture of peppermint and water and like some essential oils that would deter him from going near it. So far it's working, but, but yeah, the, for some reason I, he was much more interested in the, the thing I don't want him to be. Cats, well, some cats at least. My cat hates peppermint and hates citrus. There's a, oh, he hates lavender. Won't even go near it. <laughs> it's like so, it's, it's kind of awful sometimes because I use Burt's Bees as my main um, lip balm. So this stuff and all of, pretty much all of them, I don't know, the normal ones have peppermint in them. And if I'm like cuddling Vader and I put this on and then like a minute goes by, he'll like become alert all of a sudden and just like leap off of me. He's like, what if, what did you do? Oh God, what is that? <laughs> Or if I'm, if I put it on kind of recently and I like lean down to like give him a little kiss or something, he like kind of is looking like he's gonna headbutt me, like all being all adorable. And then when he gets closer, he's like, oh, get away from me, woman. <laughs> he's, he's just very, very much not a fan of peppermint. <laughs> I mean, I kind of understand. I mean, I, I, there's a certain cologne that Wolfie has that I absolutely hate. And if he puts it on, I'm like, don't even come near me. Don't come in the same room as me. Like, love you, but get away. Um, had cats that hate roses or flowers. Yeah, Vader did not like the bouquet that Wolfie's mom got me. It had very, very strong smelling flowers in it. I can't remember the names of them, but he was so grossed out. He only went near it once they dried. And then, of course, he wanted to eat them and play with them because they were all crinkly and stuff. <laughs> Is it Sex Panther by Odeon? Uh, probably... Yeah, it's something that bad. <laughs> That's the effect it has on me, at least. <laughs> oh, it's interesting. Yeah, I... kind of assumed that all those old... Um, oh. Show. <laughs> All those old advertising posters that were done with, like, really flat looking color. I, I always just assumed that they were with gouache or something similar to gouache. Like, poster paint, maybe, if they use that, or casein or something. And... Because, I mean, I can see why. If, if it's when you use gouache, it's really definitely a medium that lends itself well to that flat color look. Man, it's 
been a while since I've heard a Anchorman quote. Mainly because Wolfie is um I was trying to think of a way to put this nicely, but he absolutely hates Will Ferrell. Anytime he sees a photo of him, like we're scrolling through Netflix, there's a movie with his face on it. He's just he just like lets out this super annoyed grumble like oh god him <laughs> so not allowed to watch any of them Good night, sassy cat. <laughs> Happy sleeping. <laughs> Itchy, did you notice? Did you notice on Twitch or I guess in Discord? <sighs> Flood watches, ooh. <laughs> We had a crazy intense rainstorm last night as well. But I'm pretty used to it now. I definitely noticed. Uh, it's fine. It's fine if you didn't notice. soon move on trying to keep a more muted color palette on this one but it's so tempting to get more vibrant
All right, let's just move on. Don't want to get too precious with any one painting in here. Time is okay, so three thirty. So that means I've been streaming for an hour and a half. Shall we continue on more? more snow. I'm so bad at this game. <laughs> Uh, notice anything different that all men, women force men to play? It's a minefield. <laughs> I do love the updated emotes though. Yay, you noticed! <laughs> Thank you. That's all I was talking about. But I knew as soon as I said it, you are gonna be like, uh, oh god. Like, the same look that Wolfie gets on his face, like... Y yes, I, I noticed. Nice hair, glasses, dress. <laughs> And I'm sitting there like, really? I love torturing him. <laughs> it's a keystone of our marriage. I mean, he did it to me before and I could not figure out what was different. Uh, we're not thinking about it. We are being forced to, basically, by Wolfie's work. As you know, or probably maybe forgot, that he commutes an hour and 20 minutes one way. Every single day. But it's, it's like still... I can't even say a timeline. We've been talking about this since April. So it's like, uh, you know, who knows what's gonna happen, but it, it's kind of becoming more and more, mm, I wouldn't say urgent, but like really necessary <laughs> for his sanity as well as like, cause his boss wants us to. Yeah, oh my gosh, it really is itchy. I drove it yesterday because I went to see a place. And on the way home, I was like, by, I was coming home at maybe like 3.30, 4 o'clock. So in my opinion, that's before rush hour. But three towns that I drove through, people were going, it was like bumper to bumper traffic. I barely shifted out of first or second gear the whole way through those towns it was horrendous i was like uh, apparently i have road rage because <laughs> i was swearing and it was like straight out of office space <laughs> oh it was awful and i felt and like I, I really felt his pain in those moments so i was like yeah we just need to get this over with <laughs> it gives you hives just hearing me oh it's so horrible Holy crap, you live 250 yards from your office? Okay, now that is, that is a sweet deal. I mean, I technically do too, cause I work from home, but I've been in situations where I've lived very far from my workplace and very close to it. Um, and it changes a lot. We used, when we lived in Inverness and Wolfie worked in Inverness, he could get out of bed like 10 minutes before he had to be at work and make it. Obviously it's not ideal because he had to skip showering and stuff, but like worst case, it could happen. Now it's so not even an option. It, he has to wake up so early and let me just say that he is not a morning person. <laughs> he, is, he is so far opposite of a morning person. <laughs> a 
Like someone who is normally very sweet to me will, if I wake him up in the morning, even like if his alarm already went off and I'm just trying to get him up, he's like, no, oh, like makes all these grumbling noises and it's just like so mad. <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny. <laughs> And I'm just like, hey man, your alarm went off. It's it's open season. I could turn the lights on right now. I could whip the the blankets off of you. But I don't really wanna like be murdered. Cause he has those kinds of like he doesn't sleepwalk, but there are definitely times where he is saying stuff and doesn't realize it because he's still kind of sleeping. Hey Violet! No carols? What do you mean? Try to do like a snowy farmland. Excuse me. Another sunset one. I love doing snowy sunset scenes. Oh my gosh, really sacred? <laughs> That's kind of scary. Most streamers play Christmas carols this time of year. Oh no, I never do that. I think I did it like one year. I did a jazz Christmas playlist and even that was pushing it for me. Cause I, I go back and forth between hating, hating Christmas music and enjoying it. So I can't listen to any of it with words, the words, the songs with words are still um, a source of pain for me because I used to work at this place who would play the same freaking five songs over and over again for my entire shift. And it just like literally physically makes me angry when I hear those songs now. Um, but, but like instrumental and jazz maybe is, a, is, a, is okay sometimes uh, but because I've gone through it I know what kind of effect it can have on people I don't want to to subject any of my viewers to the torture <laughs> potential torture I want you guys to have a safe place away from the horrors of society Never wake a sleepwalker. Yeah, what is, what's that about? What can happen? Do you guys want me to zoom in more or do you want to still see the mixing part of the palette?
I like seeing the colors being mixed, but fine with zooming in. Okay. Well, if someone wants me to, I will, but we'll just keep going. I have a feeling most people are just using the stream as background noise. Which is totally fine. masking fluid with gouache? Uh, no. Because when I use gouache I think about it more... I mean, I sometimes use it a little more like watercolor, but I always think about it as an opaque medium. So there's no need to preserve your highlights from the beginning like you do with watercolor, which is like the whole reason for masking fluid. noise the, is the rain drumming against your roof window oh I love that I love that so much that's definitely something I'm gonna miss about this place because we have skylights and the rain can get really loud sometimes it like is wonderful I love ra loud rain Enjoy Evangeline. Good luck out there. Try to be careful while you're driving because there's lots of crazy, well I was going to say crazy drivers, but people are a little uh, high strung this time of year, so they might just not be thinking clearly. They might not be thinking clearly. What did I say? <laughs> sounded weird. I can has English. Sacred Heart, that's disturbing. <laughs>
feel like that's... I mean, how did you... You were, like, talking to him as this was happening? Or you told him afterwards? had to help out at work. Oh my goodness. Were they that desperate? They knew that you were sick and they were like, we need you. Must have been really bad. Oh geez, Lucy. now yeah are you able to relax now or are you just like technically on call Sacred Heart. It's because you're so valuable. 
You've made yourself indispensable. Moving on. Ooh, I just got an idea. I feel like mulled wine would be perfect this weekend. I haven't made that in a very long time. In like a year. Oh, definitely. I do that all the time, Jared. I, if I have a longer ongoing project, if I don't like kind of change it up a little bit here and there, I can go so crazy. <laughs> and I think it helps because it, it's like, it gives yourself a chance to miss it. As long as you don't just completely ignore it and get you know, forget about it. Maybe instead, uh, put, put it like on your calendar, like Thursday, two hours on the model, and then you can move on to something else. Like do it in pieces here and there. So prolific and I'm just lazy. Oh, <laughs> maybe I am, well, I mean, I'm addicted to painting. <laughs> There's that. I get like a rush from painting. It's like some people have drugs and, and I have painting. <laughs> Wisconsin fields in the winter. Yeah, this is, that's like a, such a common scene here, especially near where I live. Sometimes I get stuck obsessing over the why instead of just doing it and then for the enjoyment. Like if I'm thinking, oh, I should probably do some studies and then I'm like, why, do, why? Um, so that I can get better, but why? 
so that I can do better finished paintings. But why? <laughs> so that I am not as frustrated when I do commission work. Like, I have to break it down and, and like keep tracing the steps back to the why. But then when I actually sit down and do the painting, do the studies, like I love it. Even just if it's a study for the sake of doing a study, it's so much fun and like it satisfies my curiosity so much.
I hear Vader jumping around in the other room. Wonder what I'm going to find when I go in there. I keep shaking the, the camera or the camera keeps shaking because I am moving quickly. zoned in and so chilled out. This is a lovely way to wind down the Friday. Hope you guys are enjoying it and staying productive or if you're already chilling out then continue until you achieve maximum chill.
Um, I think I may end the stream after this painting so I can go finish my work before it gets too late. Um, and then after this coming week, after the holiday week, it'll be much easier to maintain a normal schedule, but uh, Yeah, I'll be streaming on Monday over on Twitch for my normal Monday stream. That's the six hour stream, so. Paint this painting for two more hours. <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> hey, Veronica, thank you. Yeah, I still have work to do on this painting. It's not over yet. Is that the Z Lady Cry emote? <laughs> left on this painting. I mean, like, it is a study. It's not a... a piece that I'm gonna be framing and selling or anything like that. Mostly wanted to practice the color temperatures on the snow. Like, do you, using the cool versus warm blue and a little bit of purple to see what kind of effects I can create. 15 minutes. <laughs> um, so what I'm thinking uh, for my, for, so here's, here's what I'm thinking for the future. For the Friday streams, um, I kind of feel like two hours a two hour video on YouTube is a lot already. Like people's attention spans on YouTube are way lower. So I feel like doing a, doing more than a two hour stream on YouTube is way overkill. So I'm thinking that in the future, what I'll do is like do a two hour ish stream on YouTube. And then if we're still in the mood to hang out, we can jump over to Twitch and do the rest of the stream on Twitch. What do you guys think? It's easy for me because I just click a button, so. I have a lot of trouble deciding if a color is warm or cold. Do you uh, have any kind of color blindness, Corvulus? Just curious. Um, I think part, part of the way you can get used to that and, and get better at deciding if something is warm or cool is mixing more often. So if you um, are mixing like a green and you add more yellow, obviously you get bright green yellow. If you add more blue, you get like a cool green, like a grassy cool green. Um, and the more you mix them and the more you get used to that, the more you just when you see the color you automatically know what colors went into mixing it so you don't even have to question it you know that that's cool and that's that's warm um and you can do the same thing even with your blues you can tint your blues to be a little bit warmer or cooler but sometimes it just has to do with the uh pigments that are in it so some pigments are just generally more cool or warm um i you can look it up if you, uh, I don't know, there's probably tons of like forums and stuff 
about it, but you can look it up and find out what pigments are what, and then you just kind of remember them as you go forward. Excuse me. Worth a try? Um, sounds not too bad to you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like that would be a good solution. Like if we do want to hang out more on a Friday, um, either way, I probably wouldn't do more than a four hour stream total on the Friday. Like four hours total is my usual, was my usual amount. And that was a, that was a good amount. It wasn't too much. It was, um, if I go over four hours, I'm pushing it for my, for myself, but Uh, it starts snowing here in, in South Utah. Yes. Hey, Veronica, you should. Yeah. Like I said at the beginning of the stream, I am forcing myself to paint uh, with paint, paint snowy scenes because lately, like if I look back through the last uh, several pages, they're all like warm summery scenes which is fine because I was kind of getting used to the tropical palette but like it's I don't think I have I don't have any other snow pieces in here um so yeah I I was like okay enough with the summer let's try to embrace the winter because it's not like it's going anywhere Blue is the hardest for me to see warm hints of color in. Um, okay, well, here's the thing. Color doesn't exist in isolation. It, it doesn't, like, our, as a human being, and we, we are looking around and seeing colors, we can never just look at a color unless we're, like, literally standing in a room, paint, every surface is painted of that just that one color. Um, so it doesn't exist in isolation. So it's all about color relationships, like painting, seeing color in general is like, it's not like, is the apple red? It's like, how red is the apple compared to the green leaf or the, the blue sky or the yellow tablecloth? That's that kind of thing. So when you're thinking about, um, what color temperature is that blue like is it warm or is it cool you it a lot of it has to do with what's around it and it can totally trick you too <laughs> like depending on the scene or depending on the painting it can you might think it's a it's a certain color but if you like did kind of try to isolate it by like looking at just that color uh, it might be more revealing that's why some people use those little cards they have they're like uh, viewfinders and they have a little dot in the center and that dot allows you to look through it and see just like one color basically but in the end it's all about the color relationships so you can figure out okay I'm looking at a blue sky and that that is a warm blue and then you can put it on your painting but it it completely changes the second you add all your other colors or, or any other color so yeah it's so fascinating <laughs> i love learning about color and, and practicing different things and figuring out how it works although i feel like the more i learn about it the more i have to learn because there it's just it's so I don't know, it almost seems like it's such an elusive concept to me sometimes. You love the very reddish orange one. Um, this one? Or wait, which one are you talking about?
did last time. Oh, the one before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> up to anything fun this weekend? I am planning on making the Patreon stickers. If I can package everything, I can ship them out Monday, which would be awesome. Oh god, do I need to go? Oh, going to the post office on Monday also sounds horrible. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should wait till the 26th. Also, I kind of get scared that if I ship every sh ship things during the crazy leading up to Christmas shipping madness, then my stuff will get lost somehow. <laughs> Makes me so nervous. Try not to die. Oh, okay. You're doing your first craft fair. Oh my gosh. So it's a holiday craft fair, I'm assuming. Family's arriving tomorrow. This will be the last you see of me. What? What do you mean? For a while. Like, till when? Okay. Hello, thank you. Um, ornaments and necklaces on your scroll saw. Oh, cool. Part of the solstice fest. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I don't know if you were here from the beginning of the stream, but I've done, this is the fourth painting of today's stream. So I'll actually be wrapping up soon and then I'll give you guys a quick view of all of the paintings. Also, I just found out Wolfie is at his third, third holiday party of the week. And I don't even know if he's coming home tonight. Like, what is that? And I remember in earlier he was like, so are you going to come pick me up? Which, by the way, he's like an hour and a half away. And I was like, no. First of all, I'm streaming. Second of all, no. He's like, oh, okay. And then he tried to make me feel bad about it. And I was like, listen, buddy, some of us have to work for a living. We can't just like lounge around at pubs all day <laughs> not gonna let him live that down anytime soon all of the paintings in the sketchbook um i was gonna give you show you the recent ones from today yeah he's looking for a driver but um they told him that they could he could stay there if because it's in one of his customers towns it's like they were like yeah you can stay with us if you want to if you want to if you don't want to worry about driving he's working too yeah 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 that's what he says that's what he that was his excuse he's like technically it's work because i'm like networking it's like all right all right Oh, the song. No, go away. God. I 
think you meant all of them. You, I, I, oh, really? I meant all of my sketchbooks that I've ever done? Is that what I meant? You guys would get so bored. Super tour, what? Man, you guys would seriously get bored. Oh, so now it's like a full, is this a critique? You're gonna comment on every single page? Oh boy. of networking makes that work. Right, Renee? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Besides, it's like, it's not like he's going to get a new customer. He's just hanging out with existing customers. So yeah. I could kind of understand it if he was going over to like try to win over a new customer or something. But Oh, really, Corvulus? Maybe I should save that offer for a day where I feel especially crappy about my art. Corvulus, please, can I give you a tour? <laughs> chocolate, chocolate stains? What chocolate stains? There's no chocolate. Speaking of chocolate, I am starving. No, it's only like 4.20, I can't go. Wow, 4.20, such a coincidence that I look at the clock. Anyways, uh, it's not dinner time yet. It's too early to be this hungry. And there is our fourth No, no, no. All right. So, until dinner time. <laughs> Here we go. These are our four snowy scenes of the day. Good variety. I definitely learned a lot just in doing these in terms of like how you can use warm and cool tones on the snow. So that was good. But I am gonna wrap the stream up there guys. So if you wanna hang out again, come join me on Twitch on Monday. That'll be my six hour stream. And then I should be back by the following Friday. We'll do another stream here on YouTube and then maybe after that, we'll jump over to Twitch for a little while. We'll see. We'll see how everyone's doing. And yeah, after that, oh, we have we have a holiday after that, the New Year holiday, but I don't think it interrupts my stream schedule. So we should be okay with stream days coming uh, through the holiday. I mean, um, but yeah, thank you guys for hanging out with me. I hope you had fun and uh, I guess I will talk to you on Discord and over on Twitch, but until then, 
Have a wonderful weekend. <laughs> it was great to see you guys. So I'm going to put my end screen on and then we will end the stream. Bye guys.